Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Okay, we're having a little bit of a whiffy smell of oil in the exhaust and I need to check what consumption we have of oil in the engine. However, first of all, we need to sort out some leaks and diagnose where the oil's going to. Well, you can see there's oil around this area on one of the uh, components here. The O-ring has split, so it's leaking around this area and so is the uh, rocker cover gasket. So we'll put an O-ring on here. Uh, that'll shut it up for a while. And we'll also put a new rocker cover gasket on. This will also give us an opportunity to do the valve clearances as well, which are uh, long overdue. Yes, we did hear a little bit of a tapping noise from the uh, top end when we did a road test. I can hear the transmission wide a little bit. Now, you can hear the road on the road side. I'm also listening. You can see a wall on that side. I'm also listening to the sounds of the engine, the transmission coming bouncing back at me. Fortunately, this is quite a noisy vehicle, so I might have to do that in the town instead. Okay, so if you remember the video we uh, showed you on uh, using the uh, stethoscope or the mechanics listening tool for listening for ticks and knocks in the engine, um, if not, then there's a link just here to uh, click through onto it. But basically, this tool is good for listening where noises are, and we found ourselves an anomaly in the top end. Possibly you heard the clicking in that video, but basically we have rather large valve clearances, rockers to uh, valve stems. Now we've set this at the rule of nine, eight down and one open, and you can see possibly the slack that's in this valve. Now look at this, this is a recommended 0 0.20 millimeters as it states in the workshop manual, and the actual value is just over half a millimeter. So we have quite a bit of slack on the tappets, which not only does it make noise, but also a lack of power. And this will uh, generate more carbon in the engine because there isn't efficient burning. Now here's a handy hint, is to take the viscous fan off so you can use a long ratchet and a 27mm socket to turn the crank round. Just to make sure you don't mangle your hands up in the pulleys, make sure the battery is disconnected before working on the engine. So basically all our tappets or the valve clearances are actually quite a way out so we're going to adjust them all. The rule of nine applies to this engine and if you don't know what the rule of nine is there's a video explaining it very clearly on our channel so click on the link below, go into that and learn about it. The 300 TDI tappet clearances, inlet and exhaust, or valve clearances if you like, are 0.2 millimeters, which are done cold. So basically, it's just a very simple adjustment. Make sure that once you've adjusted it, you've done your rule of nine, check them, and then torque up the nuts. Nuts are on the screen here for the torque wrench setting. Right, so we fit a new gasket on here, a rubber gasket for the rocker cover. Easy, comes in a pack. And you also get other bits and pieces, including some valve stem seals and some rubbers for underneath the bolts. SDC 2800. Okay, so take a look at the small print. That it says that it's a decoat set. Now, this is an old fashioned thing that they used to do a while ago 100,000 miles, have the head off, decoat the valves, and put the head back on. Always a good kit to have for engines that have done an arduous 140,000 miles. It doesn't hurt to check your valve clearances once a year on a major service to make sure that the engine's running efficiently. What we're actually doing here is just making sure we cure the leaks, get rid of some of the noises so we can check the condition of the engine. Okay, one thing that does happen with rocker covers, they do need to be checked and torqued down regularly. Right, so we have the engine running now, and if you listen, it does sound different. However, there are a few sounds that are still there. We've got rid of some of the tapping. However, there is a knock, and there is another tap which is still coming from this fuel pump down here. It is an annoying noise, however, it, it doesn't seem that the fuel lift pump will actually fail at any point in time, so it's not too much of a worry. We are aware of it. 
The other noises that are appearing in this engine, they, you can hear a blow somewhere, and also a few noises from the pulley at the front. Now, we're not sure what they are, but it's not too much of a problem. Okay, so if you listen here, you'll be able to hear air pressure coming through the inlet gasket, which has failed. Although the vehicle has actually passed an MOT recently, an emissions test, I'm still concerned that we have more smoke than what I'd like. Now, injectors, they are a service item, and people tend to ignore them. This one's a 200 TDI example, basically because I can pull this one to bits and not worry about it. Now, what you have here is the nozzle and needle, and you have two springs in this injector. Now, these are prone to wear and to fail. Okay, so the nozzle actually fits into the engine, okay, and this is what sprays the diesel into the toroidal cavity of the piston. So it is in the hot part of the engine. Now if I just knock this out, I get this out here. These components are responsible for the spray pattern and atomizing the diesel. Now on the tip of the needle, if it's pitted or it's carboned up, that will um, disrupt the spray pattern and it could even make the injectors drip, which will give you smoke. Something to be aware of with these injectors, they can fail over a period of time or just become worn. I would recommend 80,000 miles for a service exchange a kit or if you've had a head gasket blown or overheat in the engine. Diesel knock in the engine, um, which sounds quite heavy at times, could be uh, an injector that's not injecting right or the timing on the fuel injection pump, which takes me to this kit here, AST4398G from AST Service Tools. This one is for setting pump timing accurately. Now I don't expect you to um, be able to afford anything like this or about £100 but basically the pump can be set from the rear with a dial gauge. Now you have a timing, uh, a lift millimetres at TDC and these settings here are what you set with a dial gauge. Yes we do have a video on this which is linked down at the bottom if you want to go and watch it. But basically you could set the timing accurately enough with a timing pin. Right, the other thing is um, checking an engine is oil pressure. Now people tend to uh, overlook this when you have a noisy engine. Uh, is to check the oil pressure to see if the oil is actually getting up to the right pressure and relieving pressure uh, excessive revs, which this one seems to. Now basically it's plumbed into where the um, oil light switch would be, like so, and tested with the engine hot. Okay, so checking the condition of an engine, uh, internally we can do a compression test due to the fact that diesels are compression ignition. There are three types of tests you can do, which is a, a standard compression test, a relative compression test, and a leak down test. Now the leak down test we shall do later. Okay, so the most expensive way of doing a compression test is to buy the kit with dummy injector and check the pressures in the cylinder. Now, you're going to need a gauge over 348 pound foot or 24 bar and a dummy injector perhaps, and this cost is quite prohibitive. However, what we're looking for is a difference in the cylinder pressures rather than an actual reading. So if you're looking for a difference of more than 10% on one cylinder compared to another, then you should be concerned. If, for instance, you have low pressures in uh, two readings, the cylinders next to each other, that could indicate a faulty cylinder head gasket, for instance. This is according to Land Rover. Seen in the picture here is cylinder 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are test results, uh, compression test by pressure. You can notice at the bottom, cylinder 1, the pressure actually went up with oil added to the cylinder. This was an attempt to seal the cylinder a little bit more. Okay, so a relative uh, compression testing is an electronic way of uh, reading the starter cable um, current draw and then working out what the cylinder is actually doing. So basically we have a, a low amps clamp here and that clamps onto either the positive or the negative of the battery 
And basically, this is looking for the current draw, um, the peaks and the drops in the starter cable. This will tell you uh, what resistance there is in the cylinders. Now, what we've done here, we've done a test by removing uh, number one glow plug. Basically, we've uh, lost compression on number one. And then just as an example, I'll show you what readings we have. OK, so we'll have a look at the software here. And this is a fairly uniform pattern of peaks and drops where the current has been drawn and then dropped off. OK, so what you'll look at is um, one, two, three, four cylinders. There's a slight uh, difference between uh, two of them, but nothing that's too great and not 10%, um, for instance. OK, so each one of these peaks is the maximum amperage draw. OK, this is read in volts, however. And what we're going to have a look now uh, is the one with the cylinder that has no compression or low compression in it. So I'll just draw it over and instantly you can see there's um, compression missing because of the lack of resistance. Since the firing order is 1342, cylinder 3 has a higher peak because it's been able to swing a bit more and basically less resistance. So the adjacent cylinder to the one that's losing compression will naturally have a higher peak. This method is very quick and there's no need to pull injectors or glow plugs out to check the uh, compression on a vehicle. Right, so as I said before, the difference of 10%, we're not looking for a value, but we're looking for a difference of 10% between peaks, which in this case it hasn't, because looking at this diagram, it is very uniform. However, there is a, a slight difference between the peaks, which again is uniform problem with a diesel is you can't get a signal to tell you which cylinder it would be unlike a petrol engine which you could take a reading off a coil and match it up against this graph for instance okay we have a, a hell of a lot to cover yet so in the next episode we'll see what we can come up with uh, more checks and tests before we go ahead and start stripping and overhauling